So you've had a hearing test and now you're looking at this graph, your audiogram, but what does it actually mean? You might be wondering, does it tell you how well you hear in real life? Does it explain why certain voices sound muffled? And most importantly, does it give you the full picture of your hearing. The truth is, while an audiogram is an essential tool, it only tells part of the story. That's exactly what we're going to break down today. I'll show you how to read your audiogram, explain what it tells you and what it doesn't, and most importantly, help you understand why your hearing experience might not match what's on the graph. Let's get started. Hi there, my name's Adam. I'm from Alto Hearing in the UK. So let's start with the basics. An audiogram is a graph that shows the quietest sounds you can hear at different pitches. Along the bottom of the horizontal axis, you'll see frequency measured in Hertz. This represents pitch moving from low pitch sounds on the left to high pitch sounds on the right. Think of it a little bit like a piano key. On the side, down the vertical axis, you'll see loudness measured in decibels. The higher up on the graph, the softer the sound. Near the top, we have very quiet sounds, whispers, for example. And as you go down, sounds get louder, ranging from normal speech to the roar of a jet engine. Now, during your test, you heard a series of beeps that got softer and softer until you could barely hear them. The softest sounds you detected at each pitch were recorded as points on this graph. So why these specific frequencies? Well, we test these frequencies in particular because they cover the key sounds needed for understanding speech. Most human speech falls between 250 hertz and 8000 hertz, so this range gives us a good idea of how well you hear spoken words. If you've missed certain pitches, it can affect how clearly you understand conversation. And just as important as the frequencies we test is where your results fall in terms of loudness. If your points are near the top, above 20 dB or 20 decibels, your hearing is classified as within normal limits. If they drop lower, we classify the hearing loss based on how much volume is needed before you can detect a sound. Some audiologists will classify hearing loss in terms of mild, moderate, severe and profound, and this is based on where the thresholds are recorded on the audiogram. Whilst this is useful for explaining a hearing loss to another medical professional, say we're referring to a GP or something like that, we actually stay away a lot of the time from referring to the severity of hearing loss with people in clinic. And that's because the severity of hearing loss doesn't correlate with the degree of difficulty someone is having. We have people come through the doors with severe hearing losses who say they've got no problems at all. And we have people with very mild hearing losses who are experiencing great difficulty and vice versa. We find it unhelpful to classify hearing loss on an audiogram alone. And sometimes by saying something is only mild, it can actually delay people in seeking much needed help. Now back to the graphs. When you look at your audiogram, you'll see different symbols. The most common ones are circles, right ear, and crosses, left ear. These represent your air conduction thresholds, how sound travels through your entire ear system, from the outer ear, through the middle ear, and into the inner ear. Now, if your audiogram is plotted separately for each ear, you might notice that the right ear is on the left side of the chart, and the left ear is on the right. This might seem odd, but it's arranged from the audiologist's perspective whilst testing you. Air conduction doesn't tell us where a hearing problem is occurring. That's where bone conduction comes in. Instead of sending sound through headphones or inserts, we use a small vibrating pad behind your ear. This sends sound directly to the inner ear, bypassing the outer and middle ear. Bone conduction results are marked as triangles or open brackets. If your air conduction and bone conduction results are the same, that means your hearing loss is sensory neural, which means it's caused by damage to the inner ear or the auditory nerve. But if your bone conduction is better than your air conduction, that suggests a conductive hearing loss where something is blocking or interfering with sound getting through, such as earwax, fluid, or issues with the middle ear bones. The difference between these two results helps us determine what kind of hearing problem you have and whether further investigation or treatment is needed. 
Now, if you've got an audiogram in front of you, you might see even more symbols. Some of these indicate something called masking. When we test one ear, the other ear sometimes picks up the sound too. And if that happens, we use a technique called masking, where we play masking noise in the non-test ear to make sure we're measuring the ear we actually want to test. Masked bone conduction results are shown with square brackets. Sometimes air conduction results will also have masking symbols dependent on the test setup. Masking is really important because it gives us an accurate picture of each ear individually. You'd be surprised at what the stronger ear can pick up in the quiet sound booth. Now let's look at a few examples of audiograms and what they tell us. Here's an audiogram of someone with a common type of hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss. You can see that their hearing is good in the lower frequencies, but worsens in the higher frequencies. And this is known as a high frequency sloping loss. And it's one of the more common patterns that we see. The key thing to notice is that the bone conduction results match the air conduction results, indicating that the problem lies within the inner ear or the auditory nerve. People with this type of hearing loss often struggle with clarity, particularly in noisy environments. They might describe voices as sounding muffled, or maybe like people are mumbling. This second audiogram shows something a little different, a unilateral conductive hearing loss. Looking at the right ear, we see normal hearing, but in the left ear, there is a hearing loss across most frequencies. However, if we look at the bone conduction results, which have been masked, they show normal hearing in the left ear. That tells us that something in the outer or middle ear is preventing sound from getting through properly, potentially fluid behind the eardrum, a problem with the middle ear bones, or even excessive earwax. This type of result would typically lead to further investigation as conductive hearing losses can often be medically treated. By looking at these examples, you can start to see how different audiograms tell different stories. The key is not just looking at the numbers, but understanding what they mean for everyday hearing. So does your audiogram tell you everything about your hearing? Not quite. While an audiogram is an essential tool for measuring hearing thresholds, it doesn't tell us how well you understand speech, especially in background noise. Hearing in real life isn't just about detecting tones, it's about making sense of speech in complex environments, filtering out unwanted noise, and distinguishing between different voices. This is why many clinics, including ours, use additional tests alongside the audiogram. Speech in noise tests assess how well you can pick out words in a noisy environment, which is something an audiogram alone can't reveal. Tympanometry may also be used to check the health of your middle ear, and other assessments can help us understand how well your brain processes is speech. Another important part, as I mentioned before, but I'll say it again as it is really important, two people with the same audiogram can have completely different experiences. One person may get by fine with what's classified as mild hearing loss, while another one might struggle significantly because of how their brain processes sound. We don't hear with our ears, they're just satellites that pick up the sound. We hear with our brains. That's why it's so important to look beyond the graph and focus on your personal experiences with hearing. So while your audiogram is a great starting point, it's just that, a starting point. If you're experiencing hearing difficulties, the best next step is a full assessment that goes beyond just detecting beeps. Look to find a local independent clinic who can provide what you need. If this video helped you understand audiograms better, hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more similar content. It helps people find this information. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.